Welcome to the 8th Zoocast UK, filled with news, views and information about UK zoos, safari parks, aquariums and other animal parks. Marwell Zoo has unveiled its new immersive and sustainable Energy for Life tropical house, which will become the first in the UK to generate energy using waste zoo poo. Whatever subject we cover, you always end up talking poo, don't you? I do. But this sounds fantastic, with a lush canopy, cascading waterfall and bustling forest floor, which is home to a charismatic sloth, Java and Chevrotain, mass deer, pygmy marmosets, tortoises and free-flying birds. There is also a 70,000 litre aquarium with 2,500 fish, a crocodile monitor lizard and examples of nature's environmental managers. A colony of leafcutter ants. Leading the way in sustainability, the zoo realised a significant untapped energy resource in some of its 700 tonnes of animal waste, dung, soil bedding and leftover hay that could be used for a renewable energy within the zoo. The groundbreaking project with cutting-edge technology features a wood chip boiler that will be supplemented by a specialist boiler capable of burning straw-based animal manure later this year. This will provide heating for buildings across the zoo and enable the charity to reduce its carbon footprint and dependency on fossil fuels. The amazing self-sufficient building even harvests the rainwater from the roof which goes into the aquaria and watering the plants. Now that's a brand new purpose-built building. But ZSL London is appealing for help to upgrade one of their historic buildings. The troop of colobus monkeys at London Zoo is the largest in the UK. Did you know colobus monkeys are born pure white and stay this way until they're around five months old? And did you know they don't like bananas? And there are more monkeys moving house at New Key Zoo. Two male coppery TT monkeys moved into New Key Zoo. Tsuak, aged two, from La Vallée des Sanges in France, and Tucker, aged two, from Blackpool Zoo, are now sharing the Jeffreys Marmosets Island enclosure inside the Tapir paddock. Senior primate keeper Dave Rich said, This charismatic species was brought to the zoo to join Jeffreys Marmosets on their island to provide a more dynamic and stimulating environment for both species. By housing a mixed exhibit, with the occasional visit from a tapir and capybara, it's a very interactive South American exhibit. Staying with simians, but going to a much larger species now, because work is underway on building vital new havens for orphan gorillas in Cameroon, thanks to a £10,000 appeal by Bristol Zoological Society. The appeal actually raised more than £12,000, and every penny will go towards three new enclosures for the western lowland gorillas. Two members of staff from Bristol Zoo Gardens, Head of Maintenance Joe Alotti, and Senior Electrician Stuart Castle, worked in temperatures of up to 34 degrees centigrade, 93 degrees Fahrenheit, alongside seven of the staff at the sanctuary. The enclosures are being built in the forest beneath trees towering up to 70 metres tall. Each one will be more than 100 metres square. Joe said, we measured out the line for the fences working around the trees so they will have as little impact as possible. Stuart said the result will be a very natural environment for the gorillas, somewhere for several family groups and younger male groups to live together. The visit is the latest by members of Bristol Zoological Society, which has been working with the gorilla sanctuary for the past 20 years. Conservationists from Bristol Zoo are also using state-of-the-art technology to help safeguard the future of giraffes in Cameroon. So the Cordofan Giraffe Project is just one of Bristol Zoological Society's global conservation projects, um, but we're quite proud of it. It's one of our newest projects. We've only been there a few years, and already we're starting to see some successes. So since the 1980s, we've had about a 40% decline in giraffe populations overall, and the subspecies that we work with, the Cordofan Giraffe, which is found in Cameroon, uh, South Sudan, Chad, CAR, and Nigeria, their numbers are very small. We think there are probably only about 2,000 remaining. There are a couple of reasons for the decline in the numbers of giraffe. Um, the major one seems to be habitat loss and competition for food from people who are herding their cattle through um, these protected areas where giraffe remain. It's clear the Eco Guards and the Conservation Service need to have a more efficient way of getting around the park in order to patrol for illegal activity. And that means improving the road network. So one of our big activities this year is going to be trying to raise funds to help them to get uh, a tractor that will help them grade the roads and this will enable them to cover the park much more efficiently and effectively over the 12 month period and that will be a really good deterrent to illegal activity. We really wanted to set up these camera traps and also to train the eco guards working in the park how to operate them. So now that we've gone they're going to be in charge of uh, monitoring the cameras, downloading the images and sending them back to us every month 
And our first just pilot trial of that project has actually found images of giraffe on the camera trap, which is amazing because we weren't sure that we would catch them right away. But we not only caught a group, we caught a group with two babies. So it's also really great news that that population, though small, is still breeding. During their time in Cameroon, the conservationists also carried out a survey of hippopotamus along 55 miles of the Benue River. And at Chester Zoo, conservationists were highlighting the plight of the Bermudian killifish, which is at risk of extinction due to their limited range. Killifishes are found only in a few ponds, some of which are on the fringes of the nation's golf courses. Many of these brackish water ponds have underground links to the sea, so the fish have to adapt to different levels of salinity, temperature and dissolved oxygen, which vary throughout the year. A relatively small change in the local environment could wipe out these species forever, losing millions of years of evolution and further damaging the rich biodiversity of our planet. Now, as part of a bid to save them, Chester Zoo has joined forces with the Bermudian government to help conserve the species. It is the latest in a major partnership between the zoo and the government, as Chester's conservationists offer help to protect some of the island's threatened wildlife. The zoo has established a small population of fish in Chester, setting up the UK's first ever breeding programme for the species. Chester Zoo is one of only two zoos in Europe taking part in the programme, so every breeding success is a major milestone in creating the safety net population which could help protect the future of the species. Dr Gerardo Garcia, Chester Zoo's curator of lower vertebrates and invertebrates, said, Threats to rhinos and orangutans generate a lot of public interest but absolutely every species matters. All life on our planet is interconnected. The rich biodiversity of our world is under threat and conservation is critical. We will fight for the future of the Bermudian killifish. As a great philosopher once said, it's the circle, the circle of life. Very true. From the day we arrive on this planet and blinking step into the sun, there is more to see than can ever be seen, more to do than can ever be done. Um, Great philosopher. Are you talking about Lion King again? It doesn't make it any less true. There are some great events going on at Bristol Zoo, ranging from learning about animals and plants to making music. And Paint and Zoo is offering an encounter with a budgerigar experience where you can find out fascinating facts about this familiar bird. For example, that the name budgerigar is believed to come from an old Aboriginal word, betterigar. That means good eating, because if you follow wild budgies, they will take you to food, hence good eating. And if you want to find out anything more about the stories covered today, don't forget to visit our website and our social medias. And subscribe! See you next time!